So it's evening now, we're in the garden and I thought I would show you around a little bit. It's the end of July now and we are well into our summer growing seasons and there's a lot going on. Some things are going well, some things not so much, but I'll show you that in a moment. First of all, a couple little facts about the garden. Uh, this is our second year trying to grow food on a serious scale. I think it's going much better than last year. As we're building the soil, the plants are doing better. We get into a better routine of planting things. Um, so even though we had this big guy uh, in April, right in planting season, we did get quite a bit of food into the ground. So that's really awesome. Um, I'm still kind of working on how much should we plant? How much do we need to preserve? Um, what, what can we grow throughout the season um, as well as through winter so how much do we really need to preserve it's yeah it's a learning curve you only know it when once you start doing it and then you add more kids to the mix and then you need more food so that's a, a process that we're in now we have a couple beds going that are doing very well and a couple that are kind of over uh, we had some spring planting in there and that's where we'll start the fall planting um, in a couple weeks. Past there are a foot and then the beds are two foot, I think, kind of. So uh, quite a bit of growing space and then we have mulched the path with wood chips and the beds with straw. That was not seedless which is why we had to pull it all out. For most of the summer crops, we're using a channel system, which is used all over the world. And so far we're quite pleased with it. With the system, we use the clay soil to our advantage. So we let, we let the channels flood um, every couple of days and then the soil can kind of soak up all that moisture and the plants don't need uh, watering every day. I think those are all the facts I wanted to give you. So let's show you some of the veggies we're growing. So behind me here you can see our spring beds. All of them have gone to seed now. We had planted quite a few different types of greens. Most of them have gone to seed except for seed except for the brassica for some reason which is interesting. Um, still going strong. We had planted quite a few mustard seeds and they're getting quite tall but I have yet to find the time to actually harvest them I was thinking maybe I might be able to make some mustard from it um, but yeah finding the time to actually do that has been challenging with a baby and that lady even though she's very helpful yeah yeah in these beds we had also planted quite a bit of lettuce uh, but we planted it all in one go and from that we definitely learned we need to do more succession growing when it comes to lettuce. Lettuce can also be quite a challenge here because when it gets too hot and there's too much sun coming onto it, it goes bitter which is kind of a shame. So growing lettuce in high summer um, is something I have yet to do successfully without it going bitter. Last year I had it under some pallets but even then in towards this time of year it will go to go to seed Th so that's probably something that we should only grow and plant in spring and fall so that's one of the things i want to start seeding for fall so ooh, lighting <laughs> We'll just go with it. Um, in the other side of the spring beds, we had planted some courgettes, as well as some beans, some long beans uh, that like to climb. And uh, in the end, we also planted some the ancient watermelon and the Cinderella pumpkin there. But in my mind, they were all part of the spring planting, and so they didn't re wouldn't really need to be part of the summer watering system as we have in the other beds with the channels, which means that I now have to water them with the hose uh, by hand every, every few days, which is kind of annoying. So especially with the courgettes that you can easily 
you get through summer as well they would need to be part even though you have to plant them early they should be part of that system as well is something i learned this year the beans needed some more water i wasn't watering them enough so now i water them every other day and they're going crazy growing really well we've had some good harvests from them so i'm already uh, saving some of the pods letting them uh, develop fully so that i can save the seeds the climbing construction that i made for them wasn't really good enough yeah so they're not using it properly but the thing there was also that we had planted the beans and then afterwards we built something for them so there's there's not really aligned properly but that was all part of the the spring chaos that this guy created so uh, next year i think we'll get some uh, just some fencing some cattle panel i think they call it in the us uh, and put them in straight away so that they can start climbing uh, so that we know where to plant them properly but it's definitely uh, something that surprised me because things like green beans bush beans i found quite hard they don't like the heat so much but this these long beans really thrive with the heat so uh, they're a keeper <laughs> so in this first bed here um, of our summer planting i have planted a couple different things in the beginning i have uh, some of the tomatoes that i had left over from the one full row of tomatoes that we planted and then in between and after as well i have planted three different types of melons some of them are doing great some of them not so much uh, but i have some melons growing so that's very excited exciting last year i didn't really succeed in growing <laughs> melons properly uh, but i think they're enjoying uh, the more water that they're getting this year so far we have a couple small watermelons developing as well as to my surprise some ranko melons some white melons uh, i don't know what they're called in english um so they should be good i think they need a little bit more time to develop but i'm very excited to try them uh, behind me here you can see the full row of tomatoes that we have planted as you saw in this video they've started to develop some blight which is quite concerning to me because it's only the end of july and i was hoping to keep them alive at least until september so we've done quite a bit of pruning and tomorrow i will spray them with a baking soda solution which i read should help so um yeah i'll keep you updated on that i had planted four different types a money maker which is just a standard tomato 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 um, a beefsteak tomato and two types of cherry tomatoes the red one that's italian type that's good for just eating but also drying which we have been doing as well as a golden nugget um, and which is a yellow cherry tomato and they as i had hoped started producing quite early so that's good we've been enjoying them for a couple of weeks now but for next year i definitely want to try just some other types because that's the exciting thing about gardening there are so many different types of plants that you can grow that it can always be an experiment so it's always fun to try different things Thank you. Are you yeah. Next up, my row of peppers and aubergines. I planted a couple different types of peppers, and to be honest, I'm not sure what I even planted. But some of them are producing well, some of them not so much. We have a cayenne plant that's doing really well. Some of the cayenne have started to start going red, so I'll be harvesting them pretty soon. I also planted quite a few of padron peppers which are like the smaller green peppers that you can uh, roast quickly and then with some salt they're re very good but they haven't produced that many fruits yet which is kind of a shame and then for some of the other types I'm, I'm not sure really sure what they're doing 
in this bed um, what I think might be happening is that there are still some pockets that got really hard so the clay clay got really dry and hard and then the plant gets stressed and it doesn't grow much but then next to uh, a small plant will be a, a big plant that's producing a bunch of fruit uh, so that's kind of confusing to me I'm not sure what's going on there um, except for uh, maybe that the soil is just a little bit too different for them to be um, uniform kind of yeah but so far I'm, I'm quite pleased with it one of the like standard type of uh, peppers I planted is doing quite well it has starting to produce fruit quite a few lots of flowers so those should be starting to come in uh, more towards the fall and then we also have aubergines going um, two different types yeah two different types at least that's what I thought I bought um, I had a black beauty and then one of the lighter purple with white stripes I got these seeds from Cementus Vivas and just as last year it seems that they have kind of mixed up their seeds a little bit because I'm also getting the smaller uh, white eggplants as just like your regular long eggplant I think that's maybe just part of buying from a smaller seed company um, I don't really mind but I have read started to read some mixed reviews about them I still like to support um, a locally grown because they're like 45 minutes away from us so they're super close in this climate they're a small business so for just for resiliency of the community I still like to buy from them next to the fact that they're organic seeds and everything but that's something to consider if you're starting to buy seeds from them for fall or uh, next season oh and for the person who said I shouldn't be growing any okra I was trying to but I'm not really succeeding I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong I planted them quite early um, last year I planted them a little later none of them ha that has seemed to work they just stay small they're very weird they're like super small and then have like two okra on them uh, it's not what i had hoped but i'm not succeeding so i won't be eating much okra so yeah in this last bed we have a couple different things we have a few different types of pumpkins some of which are producing like the hokkaido um, most of which are not which is kind of a shame because i had wanted to grow them to keep them over winter one that i was very excited about and might still happen was one of those very big um yeah just like I, I can't describe them but one of those very big pumpkins that you can like buy in slices in the shop and we had gotten from one from our neighbor so I had saved the seeds and the plants were doing very well in the beginning um, they're still growing but and producing male fruit male flowers but no uh, no fruit so far maybe it will still happen we still have some time but I don't know probably not um, something else I'm very excited about though is this sorghum which is actually taller than me now sorghum is a type of um, grain it's in the corn family actually and it's grown in a lot of Africa and it's very um, it can do well in extreme conditions so the heat doesn't really mind but also doesn't mind mind if it's like raining for a week so it's quite a resilient plant which is obviously something that we're looking for here because we get a lot of extreme uh, weather here in the region especially the the extreme heat that we get here more inland into portugal so and i'm quite pleased it's grown well it's produced um lots of seeds so we'll be harvesting them soon and then sh i'll show you the drying process and the shilling process it should be fairly easy from what i've seen in <sighs> someone's getting grumpy 
um, from what I've seen um, other people do in videos. All the videos that I've watched for research this week, I'll link them in the description box down below. Um, so you can check them out. Some good stuff on sorghum and pumpkins and lots of fun gardening things. So yeah, we have the pumpkins here. They're doing okay. We also have the sorghum. And then in between the pumpkins, I had planted sweet corn. I haven't been very successful in growing sweet corn, sadly. Some of the ones in the back that are um, not are more in a row of just sweet corn. They're doing well. The ones that I planted in between the pumpkins are not doing well. Um, I think it might just be a spacing issue that it's too crowded in there. Um, so we'll try again next year, hopefully, because I do wanna, um, I do wanna be able to grow some sweet corn because it's delicious. As you can see, this little man is starting to get tired so it's time for me to uh, get him to bed maybe help pick, uh, pick some tomatoes but i hope you enjoyed this little uh, halfway through summer tour of the garden it might not be the perfect garden uh, i don't think there is a perfect garden or a perfect way to grow food uh, but it's certainly going well for us this year um, considering all the different factors that we have to deal with this year um, so yeah i will show you some more at the end of summer probably but this is what i call to go he's so cute when he cries 